Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It's episode 16 and today we are starting things off underneath our freshly finished base. For those of you who have seen the previous episode of Hermitcraft, you will know that we finished up all of the biomes, we've got all of that done. We also started work on the storage system and we've come up with plans for what we're going to do with the other sections of the storage system. So, we've got like general items on the west and the east side. On the north side, that's where we're going to have our shulker boxes. And then on the back side, or the south side, not the back side, on the south side, uh, we're going to have we're going to have a bunch of storage silos, which is where we're going to be storing our bulk storage. So things like cobblestone, stone, dirt, all that sort of thing, that's all going to be stored in this area in big kind of redstone lamp based storage systems. It's going to look super cool. But we also did some work on the design for the shulker box storage system in the previous episode, and I'm really really happy with it. And I think it I think it's gonna work quite nicely. But of course the issue is is that well we're going to need quite a large quantity of iron for this thing. So I'm taking 24 diamonds to the shopping district. I'm assuming someone's selling iron because there are iron farms about. I'm hoping that we can purchase enough. I actually don't know where this shop is. I swear there's gotta be an iron shop. I swear there's an iron shop. I just I can't quite find it. Well, that hasn't gone that successfully then. So, I mean, what do I do? I, we have 22 iron. We have 28 iron. I think there's 17 iron down in my bunker. You know what I'm realizing? I think maybe we should do a one hour mining sesh. So in today's super fast time lapse chat, I want to give you a few updates as to some of the things that are going on right now on YouTube and also outside of YouTube. So the first thing is, is that we hit 2.5 million subscribers the other day, which is totally, totally mental. And that's because the past couple months on YouTube have been some of the best months ever. Hermitcraft season six has just completely blown up. I don't think any of us were really expecting it to start off this crazily, but it has gone, it's gone completely, it's gone mad. So I just want to say a huge thank you for the massive amounts of support that we've received on the new season. It's just, it's so wonderful to see that people are interested in the things that we're working on. So, so that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, but the next thing that I want to mention is outside of the Minecraft channel, and it's something that I briefly mentioned in a recent Hermitcraft episode, but the project that is going to be taking us to the Philippines for a filming trip uh, has been greenlit. It's actually, it's been greenlit by the company that we're shooting it for, which is amazing because it means that we get to go to the Philippines, but also this is by far the biggest and most exciting, I would say, filming project we have had the opportunity to work on. So I cannot wait to get started. We're kind of in the pre-production stage right now, but we're going to be flying out on Monday, the 3rd of September. And I just, I can't wait to get started. It's, it's hopefully the end product is going to look really, really good. So I can't wait. It's, it's, it's gonna be great fun. That was actually very successful. This was one of the first mining sessions that we've done in a little while where we got lots of diamonds, but I've just realized we weren't really caring about diamonds. We were caring about iron. I think I might have got maybe four or five stacks. So probably could have been better. Well, you no, know, you know what? Four or five stacks of iron isn't that bad going for one hour. Yeah, so this is our current pool of resources. So we've got a bunch of redstone. We have plenty of that. We've got a handful of diamonds. In fact, yeah, we've got just over, I would say, two stacks of diamonds there with those diamond ore. And then this is our full iron supplies. Hmm. Oh, but we... Well, that's definitely going to help. We have 40 hoppers already. When did I... When on earth did I craft 40 hoppers? <laughs> that seems like a, a large number of hoppers to have lying around. Now, for anyone who missed the end of the previous episode of Hermitcraft, this is the design that we're actually going to be building. This is the shulker box storage system, or sorting system, which I created at the end of the previous episode of Hermitcraft. And as you can see, it mainly involves droppers. And then I think, yeah, it's literally two hoppers between each one. And then for the most part, it's droppers. We do also have a handful of powered rails, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And then we have all of, oh, I suppose there's a lot of comparators and a ton of repeaters and a ton of observers, actually. So there, there's quite a few redstone resources involved in this thing, but it is super simple and should work quite nicely. Now, here's the deal. Originally, I was going to have 16 of these modules for the 16 different colors of shulker boxes that you can get. But now that I've built eight on one side, and obviously there'd be eight on the other side, it's pretty small. Yeah, you know, we, we <laughs> this, this build is huge. So I don't know what to do. Do I center, do I center it? 
so that we have an equal space on either side or do I just add more modules and more different shulker boxes and just have a few colors of shulker boxes that we have two of? Hmm. Yeah, I, sp I suppose... I suppose we could expand it because we'll probably have like a handful of, of grey shulker boxes maybe for stone and maybe a handful of brown ones for dirt and... Oh, I don't know. I think it's quite obvious which option I, I've selected. Yeah, we're going big on this thing. So with all the droppers in place, now we just have to put all of the hoppers in place. And actually, because it is mainly droppers, we don't need that many hoppers. That, that was difficult to say. I'm quite proud of myself for getting it right. Except despite my, my saying skills, unfortunately my, my building skills aren't, aren't so hot. All right, so that is that all done. Now it's time to actually start doing all of the redstone. So coming out the side of these, well, coming out the side of these hoppers, we need a comparator, then a repeater, then the observer, and then the two repeaters that are going to be running into the backs of these droppers. And then we need the minecart rails on top, which are going to be updating all of these droppers. It's, it's a bit of a strange system when it comes down to it. Thankfully, we actually have loads of gold left over from, I think, previous mining sessions. So that should just about do us. I mean, I've done half of it. And yeah, those the 30, we've got more than enough. Now, I had a bit of a sudden realization that I have no clue what blocks I'm actually going to use with the redstone because normally I use like stone slabs and obviously in the redstone testing world, I use things like colored wool, but we're not going to be using that in this build. So I thought I'd just use white concrete. Hopefully, it doesn't look too bland. Do I have to decorate my redstone circuits? Like, is that a thing that I should do? <laughs> Designer redstone circuits? I don't know. Let's see, how does that look then? Pretty cool. That looks, that looks serious. That looks like serious business right there. That is quite the, this is, this is gonna look really cool. And that is the size of it, by the way. This is as big as it gets. So that is all of the redstone planned out. And as you can see, it's so compact. So compact. I'm so chuffed with this design. I think it's great. Things are going well so far. I've got all the redstone in place. I've got all the repeaters in place. Now we just need to do the comparators and the repeaters on the floor with the observers on top and the blocks on top of those observers. And that will actually be everything connected up. And this thing will be ready to rock and roll. And we can start sorting in all of the shulker boxes, which is incredibly exciting. With that being said, redstone contraptions do take quite a long time to build when you don't have loads of resources on hand. So we've got all the repeaters in place, we've got the observers, which has used up all of my quartz. So for the comparators, I think I might actually have to go out and gather some of that stuff because I don't have too much of it lying around. So there we go. This thing is now all fully completed. We have got all the comparators in place. We've got all the repeaters in place. We have everything in place. This thing is now a functioning system. And I thought I'd do a tiny bit of sort of decorating here by adding in some quartz and some blocks. Probably not going to be staying, but I just wanted something a little bit better than what we had going on beforehand. So this is it. It's done. Finished. Completed. We've done it. We, we've got it actually working. Now we need to get our hands on some shulker boxes and we actually just need to start filling them in and start working out what's going to be going in the shulker boxes, which is an enormous task. <laughs> That's like a, It's a serious, serious task. And one that I, I haven't really planned out just yet. I mean, how many of these modules do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we've got twenty-eight. Twenty-eight different shulker boxes. Which annoyingly is just just ever so slightly larger than Oh no, no, that's enough to all fit in an inventory. That's actually quite a handy number. It's a little bit on the purple side, but it's a strong start. 28 shulker boxes, all needing to be filled in with items. I suppose we should probably actually test out that this thing is working. So, uh, give me a second. All right, now that we actually have items on the inside of some of these shulker boxes, they're just random items just for testing purposes. And I actually have the slowdown clock, which is going to slow down the system so that it can actually function. Let's give this a whirl. So if we, let's chuck in some hardened concrete. Two bits. That sounded pretty good. And there we go. So it, it's gone straight there. Okay, so if we put in some sandstone, maybe three bits. Two 
that's all worked perfectly. What about if we were to put in maybe a little bit of dirt? Let's say we put in four bits of dirt. We should see that that will go through the system. Oh, have I put coarse dirt into it? Yeah, it looks like in this. That's dirt. And that is dirt. Now, is there any particular reason why that would not have worked just then? It definitely seems to be skipping it. That's very odd. <laughs> I think there might is there a bug in the system or have I made a mistake okay 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 Let, let's see what happens if there's just no items on the inside of the shulker box so there's nothing in there which means that it should just just go straight in there would be absolutely no reason why it wouldn't go into here that's the weirdest thing I wonder what's that what's that all about? It's going into the dropper, but it feels like it's not It's not quite doing it. Why is it not dropping out? This very clearly highlights the importance of proper proper testing. Ugh. Thankfully, I've managed to get it back working again just by changing up the repeater timings a little bit. So one tick on the first repeater and two ticks on the second one. That seems to get it functioning after a lot of trial and error and trying to get this to work. It's actually a really simple fix. So this, this is now done. Okay, so we've got the redstone circuit working. It's now functioning. Now we have to work out what to put in all of these shulker boxes. Ooh, that's gonna be a big that's gonna be a big project. So these are the categories that I have laid out We've got precious items redstone items stone cobble dirt greenery wood base blocks redstone a second time around because I thought it'd be handy to have two of them We've got water blocks ocean stuff trading a second trading block a food box arrows fireworks ender pearls torches sand gravel glass ender pearls again we've got base blocks a second time wood a second time we've got nether blocks we've got the diorite andesite granite and things we've got coal we've got iron and then i can't think of the last one but that seems like a good selection to start off with so i'm just going to start taking some of the items from my actual storage system and start chucking them in here and i guess the place to start is probably precious items. Now, we need to make space for certain things, and we need to make sure that there's no gaps in any of these shulker boxes. So I would say we're gonna budget for a few of those, maybe a few locations for gold blocks. Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe two spots for lapis? Yeah, I think that's probably the way to go. This redstone box is actually looking really good. This is kind of how I want it to be. The precious box, meh, it's a little bit all over the place, you know, there's definitely some work to do there. But this, this is solid. Like This is something that I'm gonna be taking on projects from this point forth. Now I have to say, some of these need a little bit of work. I mean, obviously the stone, the cobblestone, and the dirt ones, they're, they're totally fine, because that's just one thing. But it's one of those things, this is the greenery box, and I will add to it, as time goes on because I kind of don't know what I need in the greenery box just yet so all of these things will mix and match as I start playing with them but I just want to get the basis done today I don't seem to have that much in the way of ocean stuff I suppose I've probably got a few corals lying around where's my seagrass as well I'm sure I can find this stuff thankfully though I am surrounded by ocean so I suppose I could just go down to the bottom and, and harvest it can you actually get is there any way to get seagrass? 
Oh, I'm also on my way out. I forget that without a conduit, I'm gonna die underwater. Things are going pretty well. We have got, yeah, all the torches. We've got the ender pearls. I'm gonna have to add some more to that one. We've got the fireworks. Uh, we have the arrows, more to be added there. We've got my food. These are the two trading ones, which I'm going to fill in later. And we've got the ocean one. We've got the slime blocks. We've got the base box. And then gravel and sand. But the sand one, I just need to go and grab that stuff. Oh, no. I thought I heard something. Is this Grian trying to fly into my tree house? <laughs> what on earth is he doing? Oh, I bet he's going to be disappointed that I removed his tree. He's he's still here, by the way. I'm I'm very curious as to what he's doing. I think... Is Green doing, like, terraforming for me? I'm never sure with Green. He seems to just come by and things seem to change in my base. Sometimes for the better. Th there's wood. There's, there's wood appearing. And thank goodness it's not falling into my system. Because that would have caused a lot of lag. <laughs> Anyway, Grian's antics aside, I do believe he's about to actually perform a bit of a dive through my base. <laughs> nice! <laughs> so to give you some context, he, uh, he jumped through my base and it was a beautiful dive, very elegant. I told him that he, yeah, it could have been better if he added some twirls. It looks like... It looks like he, uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of passed away in the process of trying to impress me. And I suppose, yeah, I should probably be the Good Samaritan here and pick up his things and make sure that he is safe. And by the look of things, he said something about a book. Is this an elaborate way for him to, to, to get me with something? I honestly don't know what book he's talking about. Turns out I got confused. It was actually Exuma that was talking about his book. So I, I've given back, I've given all my resources back to Grian. I don't know if he's going to attempt something further. It looks like he might be in the process of trying something more extreme. I, you, you never know with Grian, but anyway, yeah, all of all of this has now been filled in. So all of my shulker boxes are now all filled up. We have got ourselves a fully operating shulker box storage system. The only things that we don't have are a few of the chests. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill them in with placeholder items so that we can use the system and so it actually functions. And I, I think we all know the drill with placeholder items. Subscribe to me. Uh, be, you should subscribe. I think that's good. Like the video. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe we're going too far. I feel like I should mention that I am I'm 100% joking around when I do that sort of thing and you should definitely subscribe to me. So let's give this thing a little bit of a tester then. What is in... Let's choose this chest. So we are going to take out eight pieces of coarse dirt and we should see how many, how many bits of coarse dirt are there. There's 16. So we should end up with 24. Okay. Coarse dirt goes in. The system is activating. Is this good? Okay, that's good. So it's all going in and eventually we should hopefully end up with 24 pieces of coarse dirt. That means that the system is working. I am going to do more tests, but they're not exactly exciting to watch. So this is great. We've got ourselves an actual shulker box sorting system. All done, we've got a sorting system, done. My items are now sorted, this is amazing. But anyway, for now, we need to gather up a lot more pumpkins because we need to do some villager trading in the near future. So I think I'm going to go AFK overnight. I'm gonna dump all of my gear inside this chest and then I'm going to stay inside my little panic room that I have just off to the right of me and I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Oh, I do believe that the server has crashed out, which is a shame. Let's see how much we got. We got literally about a stack before the server closed and this is actually full. So we might have to increase the size of the storage system. <laughs> oh, that's not fantastic.
But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, despite that slight failure of an AFK session, I think it's time to end today's Hermitcraft episode. This one's been a good one. We've managed to get the entire sorting system all sorted up. We've managed to get it troubleshooted as well. We had a few scares there. It's never good when you build a redstone contraption on a server and it suddenly doesn't work how you expect it to. So I'm sure we'll run into more bugs and things in the future. I'm just going to have to keep an eye out for them. But no, feeling really, really positive about this. This is probably the earliest we've ever had a fully functioning sorting system in a Hermitcraft season, and it's going to help me out so much when it comes to arranging my items and things. We can finally start moving all of the items from the treehouse and all of the items from the bunker up into my official sorting system, and of course we will be working on the other sorting systems in the next coming episodes of Hermitcraft when we get more iron. Unfortunately, iron is the bottleneck at this point in time. But anyway, really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.